valve came in for the winch on my truck. Um, I have been running it by simply using this extra remote clear up here above the controls. But as you can see when I'm standing here, it's really difficult to see the winch. So I finally ordered a solenoid valve for it. You know, an electric over hydraulic, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to start putting that on today. how dirty my welding truck was. Man, it looks a lot better now that I took the pressure washer to it. I spent a lot of time with the pressure washer. And I think it was covered in oil and mud and cow poop. And there is $400 worth of stuff. Uh, I didn't think it would cost quite that much. Hydraulic fittings add up in a hurry. I think I spent almost as much, well, Actually, I did spend as much on hydraulic hoses and fittings and the switches as I did just for the valve itself. So this is a cool little Vickers valve. It has electric connectors on it so I can, you know, use an electric switch to run this valve. It has manual override, which I haven't quite figured out. I think you just push those in. Um, how to get a subplate for it. A bolt on underneath of it. Uh, of course, all the fittings for that. And then, let's see, the electrical connectors for the valve, the bolts for the valve, and then a bunch of switches. And that also reminds me the wireless remote has not showed up yet. But I think it'll arrive by the time I get all of this put on the truck. I don't know. Today is Friday, April 1st. And, uh, well, it's about 4 o'clock in the afternoon already. So if I get very far on this today, I'll be amazed. Probably won't get much done on it this weekend. And the remote should show up at the beginning of the week. So I have a feeling it'll be here before I get too far on this project. But yeah, I'm actually going to put a wireless remote on this too, so I can be anywhere within 75 feet, if I remember right, uh, to control the winch, which will be awesome. But anyway, you don't care about all this, you just want to see me put it on the truck, and you just want to see the winch going, right? Did I mention I got hoses? First thing I'm going to do is put the subplate onto the valve, and see how much room I have. O-ring seal, so all I gotta do is make sure this surface is clean. I just washed my hands, so my hands are clean. And then line up that hole to the pin. There we go. And... That's not gonna work. go. Okay, and drop in the cap screw. Wait a second, did I get the, yeah, I got the right wrench. Well, surprise, the mounting screws have to be in before you put the valve on the subplate. Oh, whatever. I'm going to leave it together for now, figure out where the valve goes on the crane, and get my mount made for it and all that, then I'll take the dang thing back apart. I'm currently thinking about putting the valve up here by the knuckle crane. That will allow really short plumbing for the hoses that go in and out, you know, the pressure in the tank hoses. I think that'll work a lot better. It'll be out of the way up there. I was just doing some reading about this valve because I was trying to figure out the uh, rated gallon per minute and the pressure 
and I thought it had a relief valve in it, so I was trying to figure out the pressure of the relief valve. Turns out, there's no relief valve in this solenoid valve. So I had this idea that I will just put the two hoses on for in and out and plug them into my control valve that's already mounted on the crane over there. And that way I can test it and make sure it works. Definitely getting a relief valve in the future and we'll plumb it in like it's supposed to be in the future. Um, but I think for right now, I just want to see if this valve works. So I'm just going to put both of these hoses on there, put some quick connectors on the ends, and then attach the winch hoses to there, and that should pretty much be it. You're still with us, Timmy. I just realized something. I don't know how I know which way is in and out. I don't know which way these hoses are going to create pressure. I don't know which way these hoses are plugged in so that one is the pressure side and one is the tank side. I'm not sure if it matters with that valve. It is labeled pressure and tank, though. Oh, boy. I've been thinking this through. Uh, this is a log splitter valve. I got it to run my hydraulic post hole digger off my crane because I can put it in detent to run the digger and if I need to reverse the digger, then I can just jog it to reverse. So, since the ports are labeled A and B, it should make sense that B is your pressure on your return stroke. Which the return stroke for this is when you go to detent. So B should be pressure. So this hose which goes to pressure, should be plugged in back here. And that should pressurize the valve. Then this should be returned. That works quite awesomely. All right, I'm going to call it a night. Next thing I'm going to do is figure out how to get this line off, this metal line down here. That is the tank line, the return line. goes back to the reservoir. Uh, what I'm going to do is cut this line and weld on a coupler, an adapter, a fitting, and then I'm going to run hose. So I just gotta figure out how to get in there and get that line out, which is gonna be fun. Just barely able to get my crow foot wrench on there. It's hitting this line. But if I tilt it back, I can get it on there. And I'll see if I can get it to bust loose. like it was made for it. I assembled all this. Now I'm going to put it up in there. I did the assembly before I stuck it in there. 
to reduce as much wrench time in that cramped space as I could. Well, I've got it set up to where you push this valve to the detent and it should come out this hose which goes into the pressure side of this solenoid valve which then will go out and in the return line to the tank. The remote arrived. I went ahead and opened it up, make sure everything was in here, but this is a very, very small package. I didn't think it would all fit in one little box like that. So, $18 for this entire unit with shipping, as in $18 and free shipping. So, oh, it is on. Sweet mother of pearl. Oh, good. It would be nice if they would shut that off. So, got one remote here. And then another little key fob remote. So, should be pretty easy to hook up. It looks like everything is here. So, we will see if this works. There are a couple of bolts that come through the firewall of the cab that hold the antifreeze overflow jug on inside, under the hood, however you word that. Uh, so, I'm just going to make a little plate here that goes on those two bolts and bent a little bit to clear some other stuff under the cab. I'm just going to put some holes in it so I can bolt those fuse blocks to it. I'm going to start the wiring process. So, uh, I don't really think I'm going to film any of that. Uh, probably just be a whole lot of me cursing, crawling around underneath the truck and trying to figure out how to run the wires and stuff. I actually just kind of want to turn on the radio and kind of get that zen state going and just get it done. Well, there's the fuse block wired. Um, I know you really can't see what's going on, but the far left wire goes to a grounding bolt that several ground wires are attached to. Uh, it's actually behind this plate, this entire fuse block assembly here. Uh, the orange stripe wire, well, black with the orange stripe wire, next to it uh, is the hot wire. It comes from the key on. Um, and then the 10 amp fuse is what protects the wireless remote circuit and all that. Uh, then the wires go out down they follow the airlines I went underneath the I don't know what you call this cover here and there's a hole in the cab right here that other wires go out so I put a little bit of heat shrink around the wires and down and out and then they go out over and to the valve so that's how that's wired um, then not only is the power wired to the key on but I also put a switch over here on the dash so that way I can turn on that switch and then power up the wireless remote. So with that off, there's no power to the wireless remote at all. So, you know, going down the road or something, shut it off. Basically, turn it on only when I need the winch. And then I plan to put a switch I'm kind of thinking in this space right here, there's the crane controls. Uh, so I think this area would actually work pretty good. I could protect it, I think, really nice in there, build a little housing. Um, so I think I'll put a switch there just because it's right next to the crane controls, and that could be handy. And then I'm going to put one at the back of the truck, I think, just because you know, sometimes you're back there, you might want to you know, use the winch back there. And I'm not going to hook up the manual switches for right now. The big reason I want the manual switches on there is just in case that wireless remote fails for some reason. Um, you know. Okay, so I'm going to get the truck started, get the PTO engaged, and uh, see if this winch works. So all I'm going to do is figure out where the strap iron goes, put a couple bends in it, drill some holes in it, well, there's the finished mount. Well, possibly finished, I should say. I did get the screws put into the subplate on the solenoid valve. I should have just taken that apart and put them screws in right away. Instead of saying, oh, I'll just do it 
after I get it all attached. I don't know why I didn't put them screws in right then and there. Big mistake. Um, yeah, so I didn't record that because that was going to be an oily mess. It was an oily mess, and it's a good thing I didn't record it because there may have been cursing involved. So now I'm going to slide this into place. And I might need the nuts. I got it. Okay, good. Well, it's mounted in place finally. A little bit of wobble to it, but at this point, I don't think it's enough to bother. I think until I get the relief valve mounted on there, I'm not going to worry about it. So uh, I'll keep an eye on it, see how bad that vibrates. Well, that'll pretty much wrap up the video. Uh, I'm going to go out and move an old tractor here real quick so I can mow around it. Well, not have to mow around it, I guess, technically. So now I need to fold up my crane and put it away. I can't do that here in the shop. Uh, I had it out so I could do all this work in here and have a little more room. So I'll set the crane back down on the bed. We'll get out of here and we'll go move that tractor. That is really, really handy. So, hope you enjoyed this. Um, I really didn't get too technical with anything, did I? I don't think so. Um, really wasn't anything too technical in my mind to address, but I guess if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I might see them. I don't know, YouTube is goofy with its notification system. Sometimes I see the comments, sometimes I don't. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, y'all.